do. Welcome back to the Bodie Bros, folks. We are at season four, episode one. We just celebrated our one-year anniversary, so it just makes sense after a year to be turning into season four because seasons change. And here we are coming into the hotness of hot summer. Speaking of hot, Ray, we have a new format um, that, I mean, it's not crazy new, but it, we're matriculating to another level of listening to our audience, doing some research, seeing what the people want. And we feel that maybe this new vehicle that we're about to introduce in season four, episode one, is something that folks will really relate to uh, more deeply and want to tune into more regularly. Take it away, Phoenix Ray. All right. Well, we've used this format before for a couple different episodes, but we think this is what works and what provides you with the service of getting a reading. So we're going to do a weekly energy reading. This will be the reading starting what's June 6th. So for the week of starting June 6th, this will be energy reading. So what's going to happen is each of us are going to pull a card for a career relationship and then general overall. And, but the thing is though, is you can, you can use this how you want. So let's say we each pull a card for career. It doesn't mean that you can have to pick mine and not pick John's or vice versa. You know, if you have like a side business or a project, you could use my card for the, your primary job and then use John's for your project side business or whatever creative endeavor that you're doing. And same with relationship. When we pull a card for relationship, you could use, you know, John's for the relationship with your significant other and mine for the relationship with your friends and family. So it's up to you how you use this. So you have the power, you have the choice. So you're saying it's that we're in the week of, of June 1st through the 5th right now, ish, right. whatever, give this or take a day or two. Week. So we're going to call this incoming energetic reading. So right. this would be, so, so we're, we're going to channel, we will be the conduit. We will be the mediums um, for bringing in these messages of what, you know, we feel um, through paying attention to be, being open to receive these messages for the forthcoming week. Now, there's other channels out there where Sagittarius is in retrograde and King of Wands and Three of Hearts and Two of Diamonds and this, this, and then they do great jobs. And we pull tarot cards from time to time too, but that's not, you know, Ray and I have a, a whole different thing that we do here. We love Oracle decks. We love, you know, baseball cards, greeting cards, whatever. We might surprise you with something bizarre from time to time too. And that's it. A reading is a reading. A card is a card and, and, and a message that is channeled is a message. So we are going to dedicate ourselves on a weekly, but for at least for a while, we're going to take this season four. We're going to, we're, we're going to commit to incoming week forthcoming energetic for those categories that he mentioned. And we also talked about maybe it says career relationship, maybe Ray's reading will be at the third reading will be uh, general incoming energy. And mine could be shadow what you don't know, you don't know, or vice versa. We'll right. figure it out. We'll figure it out as we go. Go with the flow. So you're going to get, you have the potential you're getting three readings or six today. <laughs> or depending how your mind works, you could turn it into nine, 12, 15, whatever. Like, I, I don't know. Be creative. Right. No rules, just the Bodie bros. What else you got? I'm good, man. So let's okay. do this. What deck you got? Oh, I got nit, 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 nit. no shit. I promised. Bang. That's Earth magic. magic. This is like uh, this is one of the first decks I ever encountered years and years and years ago. And it's just so easy. And it's it's whimsical. It's light. The colors. It's airy. It's um, the, the readings are, are simple. Oh, yeah. The, I'm looking at the last card I pulled. It's a loaded just a little example. Lotus flower enfoldment. That was such a a beautiful reading for me to just experience in that moment. It just it hit my heart and I'm like, ah, oh, God, that's why I love the cards. Like just those gentle reminders, like, Hey, this is what's up. And you're like, yeah, like you're it. damn right. This is what's up, man. Thank you cards. <laughs> so, all right. You want me to go first or you want to go well, first or how are we do You're going to show your deck. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just going to do in the trusty, um, Osho Zen tarot, which is just, just the Osho Zen? Okay, just come the, on. Just the Osho Zen tarot. It's like, saying, it's like no. saying just the Death Star. Like, 
So let's pull one for a career. We're each going to pull one for a career. And then okay. you decide how you want to use them. If you just want to go with one of ours, or like I said, you could apply it to something else career-wise. Maybe you have a, a job you're going for. That's very nice. Yeah, so take your time, pour your intention into either, as Ray said, him or I, or both of us. Have one question, two questions, three questions, however you want to apply it, whatever makes sense, whatever feels good. We're going to clear the space here, folks. We're going to clear the decks. We're going to put them on our hearts. Are we pulling at the same time this time? Or are we yeah, going? We'll pull yeah. At the same time. Okay. Yeah. I like that. All right. All right. Shuffle up. Mine. You got yours already? You're so fast. I'm such, <laughs> I just talk a lot, guys. Okay, you know how I do it, middle of the deck. Oh, spread them out. Mm, 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 mm. Yep, that's the one right there. It's, it's stubborn. <laughs> okay. Oh, speaking of the Death Star, <laughs> that is no moon. Are we ready? Yeah. What do you got? I've got new moon. Promise. Ooh, promise. I have the miser. Is that how you say it? M-I-S-E-R? The miser? Yeah, miser. All right. So I got the miser. You have new moon promise. Yep. Very nice looking. All right. Who, yeah. You want to go first? Um. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. I believe it's alphabetical, so it shouldn't take me long to find this. So take a moment. You heard about the miser. As I look this up, you heard new moon. What does that mean to you and your beliefs, spiritual and or otherwise? Promise. What is that word? How does, how does it how is it hitting the heart right now? What is it making you think of, reflect on? Or just clear your mind and get ready for me to read from the book, and then we'll talk about how we feel about it. All right. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Gazing at the silver of the new moon smiling down upon them, the couple embraces each other, welcoming the promise of their love. The fading sun drapes the clouds and waters with its tinge of luminescence. As the crescent opens its arms to the nearby planet Venus, named after the Roman goddess of love. This is a time for manifestation, beginnings, and renewal with the promise that our desires will come to fruition. Here, Grandmother Moon initiates another lunar cycle, moving from darkness to fullness and back again over approximately one month. Her promise of what is to come is embedded in the first glimmer of her light as she emerges from behind the curtain of darkness that had recently encompassed her. It is a promise that has been kept for as long as she has existed. This is a time to launch a project, a new relationship, oh, or renew something that has been put aside for a later date. Gosh, I love this. With your intention and willingness to allow a full cycle to complete itself, that which you desire will manifest. The seed of that idea is ready to emerge from the darkness of your subconscious into your full awareness. The next step is to put into action what is required to fully realize this idea. Wow. A promise has to, there's a little, little bit more, and maybe normally I wouldn't read, but this, this one's just hitting home, man. I feel, feel good about this. I hope you do too, folks. A promise has two meanings. It can be a commitment and guarantee to yourself or someone else that a particular thing will happen or it can imply that something specific is expected to happen. When your will is aligned with the will of spirit and your intention is focused upon what you wish to have happen, there will be fulfillment and the promise is kept. Boom! Damn. Come on! <laughs> That's a great reading. I mean, so, you know, we actually, out of that, you know, a new start, manifestation, being in alignment with what you want and putting that into action. And, you know, if you do that, the promise is, is that things are going to work out. Things are going to, you know, things are going to start up, change. Um, so, yeah, work on getting in alignment, taking, taking those steps forward. Um, Was this career? Yeah. Okay, okay. So this is, you know, being bold, go out there, be in alignment, you know, with whatever that is in your career wise, maybe that's going for a new job or going for promotion or um, starting a new business. The time to act is now. 
I, I don't have very much to piggyback on there or yeah. add, except like, you know, last, I believe it was last week, you pulled the commitment card. Was that right? Yeah. Like, here, here we go. The seas are tumbling into the shore of today and the incoming energy of next week. Like, commit, focus, intention, get really like pin, needle, pinpoint, sniper, focus, like just really intensely hone in on what your target ambitions are and 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 go for it man take you know go for it and 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 feel good about it we've all planted lots and lots and lots of seeds like we be patient but you know water water the garden and 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 know that if you tend to it and you give it love and you believe in the garden, whatever it is, career-wise, folks, the shit's gonna grow. It's gonna grow. And you know, I've been saying Ray for a while since that one fun day and that one reading that fruit is hard to grow. Right. But it's not hard to grow if you commit to it and you focus and you believe and you 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 really right. you promise yourself and you promise this seed and this garden is the understanding yeah. of the forces yeah. that you're working with that we're going to get fruit. Right. You release resistance to the fruit being hard to grow. Fruit's no longer hard to grow folks. <laughs> grow the damn fruit. All right. You're uh, up. You like mine? Yeah. This is the miser. I don't think it's going to, it doesn't look as positive as yours, but. <laughs> all right. The woman has created a fortress around her and she is clinging to all her possessions she thinks there are her treasures. In fact, she has accumulated so much stuff with which, with which to adorn herself, including the feathers and furs of living creatures, that she has made herself ugly in that effort. This card challenges us to look at what we are clinging to and what we possess that is so valuable, it needs to be protected by a fortress. It needn't, it needn't be a big bank balance or a box full of jewels. It could be something as simple as sharing our time with a friend or taking a risk of expressing our love to another. Like a well that has sealed up and become stagnant from disuse, our treasures become tarnished and worthless if we refuse to share them. Whatever you're holding on to, remember that you can't take it with you. Loosen your grip and feel the freedom and expansiveness sharing that can bring. Okay. I, I, I'll give you my take and then you let me know what you think or if anything pops up for you, Mr. Bodie Phoenix Ray. I kept hearing, and we have a lost episode, folks. And um, at this point, barring some miracle of sorts, it might never be seen or heard again. There was something that came up in that episode that's coming up again for me resoundingly as I listened to Ray uh, share his reading. And that is a dear friend of mine whom I've never met, but hope to aspire to one day spend some time with Jack Black in his band, Tenacious D shared, set the artist free. And before they tear into their musical explosion, um, he graces the mic and he says, quit your day job. And I'm not giving you financial or career advice here and telling you to walk into the office saying quit your day job, but quit your day job. And for the first time in your life, he says, allow that artist to come out and be free. Do what you always wanted to do. And, and, and when I feel, when I think and feel and hear and see Miser, I, I don't see it as a, as a, a negative thing or not as a, so much of a, as a positive thing. You said it's not gonna be maybe as positive as reading. I, it, it feels liberating to me. It feels like, all right, this card's giving me permission. Like, I'm holding on to things. I'm holding like, I'm holding like, like I've got to pay my rent. I got to do this. Yes, it's true. And I have responsibilities and I got, I got, I got, I got, but man, take some risks, folks. Take, le take some leaps of faith. Jump. Look, if, if you jump off the cliff with good intention, and I don't mean a literal cliff, relax, step back away from the cliff, folks. But metaphorically speaking, take a leap of faith. You're always going to be cradled, man. If you're doing good work and you have good intention and your heart is pure and you're, and, and, and you're committing yourself you're promising yourself, the world and others, 
that like, I need to leave this thing behind. I've been misering my pennies and my money and paying my bills and doing the responsible thing. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've abandoned this part of me that's, that's so neglected and wants to come out and share something even greater in the world, something healthy and, and, and transformative and, 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 and inspiring. I'm going to do it. And it might be difficult at first. You might, you know, even find yourself without a home for a little while, but guess what? Again, maybe not the best person to take career advice from, but I'm still here and I'm making beautiful music and, and poetry and art with my friend Bodie Ray. And I'll tell you from a place of experience, take the leap, make your life extraordinary. Yeah. I, think, I think what it kind of comes down to is coming out of your comfort zone and letting go of that security blanket and figuring out, you know, all of us have positive attributes all of us have something to offer within ourselves and it's letting that be out letting that and using that whatever that is that those attributes that you have that power within you and using it letting that come out and using that to make the world a better place and you know it's sometimes it's scary sometimes you have to have that courage and you gotta you know it's putting yourself out there and you may be afraid of being judged or what are people gonna think and you know, what's my family going to think? What are my coworkers going to think? So this could be, this could be in related to career, you know, this could be stepping out of that comfort zone, you know, maybe it's going for that other job or taking that risk and, um, you know, starting a new business out there, starting a new business, right? Being an entrepreneur. And look, look, I, again, it doesn't, you don't have to take everything literal. And again, folks, this is for entertainment purposes only. There's a disclaimer on the on our site here that says, you know, don't don't take our advice, um, but take our advice or 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 do or whatever. But we're not responsible for the outcomes. You're responsible for your own decisions and outcomes. Anyway, what I'm saying is, is like raise it. You don't have to quit your job. You don't have to leave your job, but allow yourself to be open to expressing yourself in other ways, where you could supplement that job or graduate into another job or seek another job or start that business and then eventually leave that one financial means of support, et cetera, et cetera, and enjoy the fruits of this lifelong passion, labor and project that you've been <laughs> neglecting. I will post the hilarious video link below. It's called A Cosmic Shame by Tenacious D. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's, in, yeah, like you said, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to quit your job tomorrow and start this new venture. Maybe just taking one, you know, a baby step here and there, and yeah, you know, get stay, you know, don't don't get don't get incredibly uncomfortable unless you're open to that. But you know, do things that feel good yeah. to you that you know you feel like you're not going to hurt yourself or your family or others in in a way that you can't recover from. Right. Um, but take a chance, folks. <laughs> All right. You ready for a career? Uh, relationship. Relationship. Let me shuffle it up, man. Let me shuffle it. Shuffle it. Every day I'm shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. All right. Um, show them the back of the cards again. This is the deck, man. If you want the John with the J reading. <laughs> Might not be the most financially successful career advice person out there, but I haven't done too bad with relationships. Mm -hmm. I have a love for so many people around this beautiful world. All right, next week, incoming energy, 6-6 six, six, on the heart. I wanted to come out. Middle of the deck, middle of the deck. Ray, do you want to like reach out and help me with this one real quick? Like I'll just get in uh, there, uh, like, 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 like right there? Or right there. Right there, okay, got it, okay, got it. All right, and action. <laughs> Green man, I've pulled this card before. Synergy. I like it. Green man. Green My man. Card. I'm wearing all green today. Look at that. Green man. What's My yours? Card is patience. Okay. Patience. We just talked about patience and planting seeds and and commitment. It takes right. it does take patience. Okay. All right. All right. Uh you want you want to read first this time? You yeah, want me to Okay. There are times when the only thing to do is to wait. The seed has been planted. The child is growing in the womb. The oyster is coating the grain of sand and making it into a pearl. This card reminds us 
that now is a time when all that is required is to simply is to be simply alert, patient, waiting. The woman pictured here is in just such an attitude. Contented with no trace of anxiety, she is simply waiting. Through all the phases of the moon passing overhead, she remains patient, so in tune with the rhythm of the moon that she has almost become one with it. She knows it is a time to be passive, letting nature take its course. But she is neither sleepy nor indifferent. She knows it is time to be ready for something monumentous. It is a time full of mystery, like the hours just before dawn. It is a time when the only thing left to do is to wait. All right, we hit on a few familiar themes again here with patience and and seeds and the moon and cycles and and here, I mean here comes the fruit Ray it's coming fruit. it's I mean I, I feel like six six twenty one is the week of fruit man it's it's time uh, we we plant believe in it that it's come see it look for it um, you've put a lot of work in. You've, you've tended the soil, you've watered the garden. Like it's, I feel like it's, it's just be patient. It's coming like in a few days, Sunday will be upon us. The fruit will be here for right. the fruit is no longer hard to grow. I'm excited about this, man. Like, uh, patience. Okay. Relationships. Um, gosh, it's, it, it's, it's paramount. Uh, I, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm not gonna take I'm just gonna take that word now. You like, you know how I like to gravitate to one word. Just yeah. the word pay. When I think patience and pulling that card beyond what you just read, I've been. I, I just love. I love relationships. I've been in so many types, so many kinds. Um, always in a romantic relationship because I love having a partner. And what I think what I've learned in this latest relationship, above and beyond any of the other ones, is is the more and more patient you are with each other and the deeper and deeper you listen, the richer and richer the fruit becomes, man. It's just, it's such human spirits and c communication and the, the bonding of two souls is so delicate. And there's so many layers with trauma and feelings and sensitivity and this and that, that if you don't and, and can't harness that gift and that energy and that practice of patience, it's, it's, you're never going to have a chance. I think too, also with how this could relate to a relationship is maybe even someone who's not in a relationship and someone who is seeking and, you know, maybe sometimes you're bettering yourself, you know, you're working out at the gym, you're, you're eating better, you, you're loving yourself, maybe you're, maybe you're buying a new wardrobe or whatever. And it seems like, man, I'm doing all this stuff. I'm getting my life in order. I'm loving myself, but it's like, there might be some impatience like, oh, when is, when's, when's going to be the, the payoff, mm. you know? So sometimes it, not trying to rush into things and thinking um, with meeting somebody and, and just loving yourself and allowing, allowing the fruit to grow. You know, it's like, you can't make the grow, the fruit grow any faster than what it is. It's going to grow when it's ready to grow. All you could do is provide the sunlight, the love, the watering. And sometimes that's just what you have to do to yourself and just be patient and, and be open and allow, you know, eventually if you're doing that stuff and you're betting yourself, you're loving yourself, the fruit's going to grow. The fruit is going to grow. It's coming, man. And like you, you work out and stuff and I'm trying, I'm trying to get back into it because I've been battling gout for 20 years and I'm getting to a place of peace and understanding of myself where I can allow myself to really just invest in not so much taking chances, but being in harmony with what's going on in my body and, and trying to make it stronger and um, and finding a, a place of homeostasis that's just gonna make sense with food, with exercise, with everything, relationships. And um, so like, you know, you're like, where are my gains, bro? Like, how come I'm, I can't see the shred and the tricep yet? But you're like, oh, I go, I'm going every other day and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, doing all, I'm doing all the things, but what's happening below the surface? What's happening, but what you can't see. Yeah, you might not see that shredded ledge on your tricep, but dude, with what you're eating and how you're moving your body and strengthening, what's going on with your organs? You know, what's going on with that lack of inflammation now, in, you know, inside because you're eating more clean 
and you're living more clean, like, dude, that's, that's some fruit that that's some hidden fruit. You know, I, I think the shred, right. I think that's low hanging fruit. You're like, yeah, they pluck that pear, but like the, 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 the deep, rich treasured fruit is a lot of times that which we can't see. And even but, like, even like with that, like mentally too, you know, you're yes. doing it, you're going there and you're, you're making a commitment to yourself and, um, you know, that's going to give you more focus and more commitment and be able to make more commitments and other things in life too. That's going to, you know, and there's the promise going to expand. And there's the promise peeking its head out again. That's a beautiful song, by the way. Uh, there is a beautiful song, by the way, by Tracy Chapman called, um, the, the promise. I will put that link below as well. It's a musical day, Ray. It's a musical day. <laughs> All right. Green man pop the card up again that was i think he's there's like amidst the foliage there there's some uh it's hard to see with but i think he's in yeah he's in there somewhere it's hard with the reflection and the lighting and stuff but green man synergy man it's been years since i've seen that card um let's see what that message has to bring to the forthcoming week Okay, here we go. It's not too much. All right. Green Man is Earth's vegetation personified. Although he has many variations, this card depicts a more subtle and embedded representation. In other portrayals, he resembles the face of a man covered in green foliage as branches and vines sprout from every direction. There exists some form of Green Man throughout history. I did not know this. And in a myriad of cultures throughout the world often a symbol for the rebirth of life in springtime. He's also been associated with the Lord of the Wildwood. As a representative of the plant kingdom, Green Man reminds us of the incredible synergy required for Gaia to maintain her delicate and dynamic balance among the various beings on the planet. Synergy is the interaction and cooperation of two or more elements that produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate efforts. We witness this in the complex and cooperative interaction between plants, humans, and animals. For instance, fruit trees propagate by being eaten by an animal that then deposits it back into the earth after digestion. As a new plant grows, bees pollinate the flowers, and the cycle begins once again in nature's simple yet remarkable synergy. All right, bringing it home here. Get ready, folks. You have the advantage of an incredible synergy at this time. So incoming Sunday, 6, 6, 21 energy. You have an incredible synergy at this time, folks. A flow of life is guiding you relationship-wise where things you seem to full, seem to uh, look like full, where things seem to fall into place as you move about your business. You are in a mutually cooperative interaction with spirit as your will is aligned with the will of spirit and your mission is congruent with your sense of purpose. That's good news. When this is happening, there is a synergy, a way that your life force is continually coming into balance with the forces of nature. There is also a synergy between your spiritual awareness and your personal self or ego. Be aware of the various idiosyncrasies of your ego and do not take any of them too seriously. Know that your higher self is always looking out for your best interest. In this cycle, tune in to that guidance, however it shows up, and you will find that you move through life with greater ease due to a synergetic balance of forces expressing themselves as you. Hmm. Woo! Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> it really was. Well... When it comes to relationship, tuning inward, going deep, allowing spirit to flow within you and not letting in caught up with um, ego, you know, is just going to make everything relationship go smoothly. It's sort of being in alignment. That's kind of what I got out of it is the synergy is the different energies and you're allowing them to kind of move through you. And doing so is just going to make you know, it's just going to make everything go smoothly in a relationship and maybe listening, listening to that deep sense of wisdom within yourself, you know, from your higher self and tuning in. And maybe that means 
you know, taking some time to meditate a little bit and connect with that place of stillness and doing that before you move forward and relationships could also help as well. So what do you think? I think the only thing I would really add to that, because the reading was very thorough. It's funny. I thought this deck was like pretty simple and the messages were pretty short, but here we are. Um, <laughs> um, I haven't danced with it for quite some time. So now I know, but I still love it. Uh, is that, um, yeah, everything you said, beautiful. Maybe can, taking the opportunity, because we keep talking about fruit and this reading talked about fruit, uh, eating some fucking fruit um, can, and, and some, some green stuff and connect more importantly though, like connecting with nature. Um, so you said, meditate, go sit, li listen. You said, listen to, uh, listen to the trees, L listen, yeah. listen to the breeze, listen to the birds, listen to the bees, <laughs> you know, we're talking about relationships. So it was kind of go hand in hand, um, at least romantically speaking. And, um, there's so many answers and so much in the, in the stillness and, and, and maybe this reading is just a gentle guidance um, or re reminder to spend some time outside connecting with the, the natural cycles of the moon, mm -hmm. of the, of Gaia, the earth and, and all of its wonderful um, synergistically, synergistically, synergistic potato, potato uh, beings, sentient um, and whatever pops up for you yeah that's all i got yeah i think it's kind of synergy is you know realizing the connection you have with nature and realizing the connection with everything is connected somehow even every relationship is relationship with nature relationship with other people and so on relationship with spirit everything and, everything is relationship right and respecting respecting it honoring you know that connectivity and maybe sometimes we forget about it or we don't see it or, or really celebrate it in a way that we could. So look mm -hmm. for those, you know, synergetic things today and those uh, synchronistic things too. Love that word um, and the magic that surrounds it. But it's another topic for another day. Or is it? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we're shuffling again. Oh, what, what do we do for general, general incoming energy? Yeah, let's do, do general. To? Okay. We'll do general. Maybe next week we'll do shadow. I don't feel too shadowy. Um, I feel I feel like I like I like a general. Or what we could I, do too is when we read the card, maybe we can give like what the challenge of that card could be too. You know, what I mean, like if it's sure if it's coming up. Yeah, I feel like with this deck and with this week, you know, um, with the fruit that's coming in and and everything that we've been pulling so far and tapping into, I feel that. Um, yeah, maybe maybe the shadow stuff can just take take a rest. <laughs> We're always working on the shadow. <laughs> All right, I got my card. I don't. Okay. Whoo, incoming. Whatever will be, will be. <laughs> ba -ba -ba -da -ba -da. Charge. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. There. Oh, that looks sexy. You know, that one's just like saying like, hello, pick me. I'm right I'm right here. You don't have to dig deep. It's right there. Oh. I like it. Childhood innocence. And here's mine, which is funny because I actually pulled this for myself earlier today, is rebirth. Okay. Rebirth and childhood innocence. That's kind of, they kind of go together. This is this is gonna be fun. See, like sun peeking through this, like it looks like sun setting because the clouds are pink and fuchsia and purpley, lavendery, and there's a girl that's like trying to touch the ray of sunshine overlooking a lake. A boy that's connecting to a tree. We just talked about connecting with nature, dude. Sit under a tree, talk to a tree, connect to a tree. Um, but I'm just talking about the car because it's hard to see the the, the beautiful artwork and mm -hmm. um, the childhood innocence of it all it's really right. magical touch my heart all right so i'll go first this time yeah yeah okay childhood innocence general incoming reading la 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 <clears throat> bum, 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 ba, dum, ba, dum, bum, bum. innocence childhood all right the light from the heavens falls upon the children through the rays of the sun that illuminate their presence like a spotlight 
the little girl reaches out to these bright beams and these elements together portray an idyllic childhood activity for many of us who have had the privilege of exploring the natural world. So I had someone coming to the door. Um, the blanket, pardon the interruption there and the, the pause in my reading. Uh, the blanket of lush meadow grass embraces a small pond, which leads to a more distant valley, one that is darker and shrouded by the very clouds that also produce this remarkable play of light. In their exploration of the world, it's inevitable that these children will at some point lose their original innocence. It doesn't have to be a permanent loss, however. I like that. We don't need to live in constant fear and anticipation of such an event, nor do we have to reconcile the loss of that state of purity by constantly romanticizing the past and missing out on the present. The wisdom and faith we've accrued from our life experiences are keys to recapturing the state of innocence that state of innocence. The light that will guide us through any dark passage is the light of spirit from within that connects us with source. Finding our innocence once again, we become aware that it was never lost, just forgotten. Innocence is not simply the lack of guilt or shame, but a quality in itself that you naturally possess when you first come into this existence. There are challenges you have faced throughout life that have further shaped your personality and character. You have also likely encountered moments following a disappointment or loss when you turned sour or cynical, and no doubt have had times when layers of anger or fear blocked the flow of your vitality, your life force. Yet in spite of all this, there is a core of innocence that you can reawaken by releasing any shame that has covered over the truth of who you are. Take any opportunity to heal this shame and let it go so you can revisit that state of purity. Doing so helps you see every moment, I'll tell you why I'm laughing in a moment, with fresh eyes and removes the filters that inhibit your light and love from coming forth. You truly are a child of God, so allow yourself to be that. Damn, this deck was hitting today. I love that, man. See, what I kind of... um. To me, this is the fruit. This is the fruit. Um, you know, when we do our spiritual practices, you know, mostly day to day, um, the things our experiences get colored by our past, you know, our past traumas, stuff we went through, and that kind of filters what we experience. So by doing meditation, by doing shadow work, and healing all those past stuff, those kind of removes the filter of that. And so we're able to see things again with a beginner's eyes, the eyes of a children, eyes of innocence. And it's crazy how sometimes when we heal something within ourselves and maybe we meet somebody that we see or, and we look at them differently now, you know, maybe before you had, maybe we, before we've had like judgments about that person or we're kind of critical or whatever. And then we heal that stuff and we see that person again, it's like, oh, I noticed something different in that person, you know, that I didn't notice before because I was too busy criticizing or judging, which is really judging yourself. You know, it's, it's always like a lot of times what we judge on other people or stuff that we don't like about ourselves or something that we're shaming ourselves about. So it's through that healing that gives us that, you know, the, that new perspective of seeing the world and seeing other people. I saw your post earlier today about that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I liked it or not. Maybe I should. I don't know. Um, I, don't know. I should. I should like it to let you know that I've. Sometimes I'm weird about people. We get weird about the like button for some reason. I don't know. It's, should yeah. you, I'm telling you right now. I like your post, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'll go back and like it so more people can see it. Um, I think. Oh, I was. I was in the middle of doing something on my phone. That's what it was. Um, there's my excuse. I just. All right. Thank you for saying that because you you hit some perfect chords there. Um, things that I wasn't going to talk about. So I'm glad we do this the way we do this. So people can get multiple perspectives and um, illuminations of sorts. I was laughing toward the end there because my resistance before we started, I was like, we're not doing shadow this week. Okay, folks, I've had enough shadow. I'm like, there's no, but there's actually shadow on the cards because the sun's setting in the clouds and all this stuff and the lights right. peeking through. And at the end, it talks about, you know, like doing, 
it's shadow work and like okay and like don't bulldoze your feelings your emotions maybe the challenge this week right this is the fruit you know that like ray said is allow shame to come up and when it does meet it with loving awareness i did it again right got it got it. <laughs> snuck, snuck it in this episode and and if you know how to do shadow work around it, do it. If not, seek a practitioner or help or do some research about it. Or if you know are not into that, just give that shame that comes up some presence. And that yeah. in my case would be little John. In your case, little Ray. And just be there for little Ray, little John, little whomever is out there. And 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 have a you know interesting dialogue, parts work, whatever, no work. Just be with that feeling. Don't push it away. And and, and and then through that transformation happens. That's the long story short. I'm also going to say in the spirit of set the artist free, thank you, Jack Black, Tenacious D, um, get some paints out, finger paint, clay, crayons, pencils, pens, whatever. If, you know, if art is calling you, be a child. Yeah. let that innocence back in it doesn't have to be a perfect picture just draw just create no one has to see it or put that shit up on the fridge and put a gold star on it again go connect with a tree like climb a tree don't hurt yourself like take it easy do what you can do like know your limitations or just sit under one and, and listen and listen be in nature watch an inchworm crawl across the branch or a butterfly floating on the breeze like ride a wave to the shores, you know, do some body surf and some boogie board and something like chase, you know, chase a seagull and, and try to fly with it. Whatever. Don't hurt the seagull though. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah. Maybe reconnect with an inner child. Yeah. You know, you do some stuff that you enjoy doing when you were a child that you kind of forgot about, or you kind of put off and, you know, take some time and, you know, go run around outside and, <laughs> You know, maybe call up a childhood friend to eat some watermelon. <laughs> Fly a kite. <laughs> All right, you ready? For, uh, this is, uh, I'll show you the car rebirth. Yeah, kind of goes, seems like it might probably goes along with what yours too is, you know, rebirth is seeing things that way. This card depicts the evolution of consciousness as it is described by Nietzsche in his book, Thus Spake. I can't even read what it is, but. He speaks of the three levels of camel, lion, and child. The camel is sleepy, sleepy, dull, self-satisfied. He lives in delusion thinking he's a mountain peak, but really he is so concerned with other people's opinions that he hardly has any energy of his own. Emerging from the camel is the lion. When we realize we've been missing life, we start saying no to the demands of others. We move out of the crowd, alone and proud, roaring with truth. But this is not the end. Finally, the child emerges, neither as quiescent, I can't re nor rebellious, but innocent and spontaneous and true to his own being. Whatever the space you're in right now, sleepy, depressed, or roaring and rebellious, be aware that it will evolve into something new if you allow it. It is a time of growth and change. I feel like that's just the bow on top of the gift that has been the readings of today, man. Yeah. Uh, I think that just echoed every sentiment all in all at once in a very compact way, everything we just talked about. I think, I think it's a hit on every cylinder. <laughs> it re it yeah. really did. Uh, and like, I, I don't know, like, um, be an allowance for uh, there, you know, be an awareness and, and the fruit is coming folks. It's, uh, it's here. Feel it, yeah. taste it, savor it, dive into it and, and, and get dirty with it. Let the juices flow. And, and what do they say? You know, take, take a, take a drippy sticky bite out of life pie, man. And, and relish the fact that we're alive and, and reclaim that innocence. Innocence, <laughs> coach said. <laughs> coach said, execute. Um, it's a it's a reference to a Shaquille O'Neal movie. Um, uh, <laughs> I've been hating on Shaq lately. Shaq, I love you, man. It's just it's a whole another story. Um, but um, yeah, uh, 
patience, yes, and, and patience. Just being patient with ourselves and each other. I, it, wrap, it wraps it up. You take it away. Take it away. <laughs> well, when I think of rebirth, I kind of think about just going back to your natural state. You know, who were you before you were born? Who were you before you became John? Who were you before I became Ray? You know, who was I? You know, we're given all these labels and concepts and told who we are through our experiences and our social conditioning. And we wear this, you know, this suit, you know, this mask of this is who I think I am. This is who I think I am. And, you know, a lot of times through our spirituality or anything, even people who aren't through spiritual practices will come through an awakening and they realize this isn't who I really am. I'm not this person. I'm not this like you know, this, this person, this concept of who I think I am. And so what happens is you start shedding these like false identities, these self concepts that you've been kind of stuck in, you know, you start healing these traumas, you know, maybe you, because of this trauma, you think that you were somebody who, you know, I'm somebody who always gets betrayed in a relationship, or I'm always, I'm an introvert, or I'm a loser, I'm a, whatever this label of you think you are, you kind of like realize that that is just a label because you believed some experience that happened to you in the past and you're like, this is who I am or somebody else told you who you were. So awakening and is a rebirth is kind of just realizing going back to the original awareness of who you were, that place within you and allowing yourself to be more authentic. So I think that's really the rebirth is kind of an awakening of the authenticity that's deep inside you that maybe that was cock blocked by other people or cock blocked by yourself. <laughs> he went there folks phoenix ray went there speaking of rebirth what is on a personal level what what made you recently identify with the phoenix and, and why you well been... it all happened last year when i was going through a tough time yeah and i kept seeing a lot of synchronicities with i kept phoenixes like in tv shows or movies or the word and right. so like last year was, I, I felt like last year was sort of a, a rebirth for me. Yeah. And I had a lot of, you know, all these ideas of who I thought I was and I did a lot of healing and that was the fruit, you know, I did all this work and it kind of came to this big thing, which seemed like it was like, a, I had a really bad breakup and everything. And it was just like everything that I thought was going to happen, didn't happen at all. Crashing was destroyed. So I just had to go inward and discover who I truly was, I had to do a lot of healing, um, especially at discover again with my um, my um, divine masculine, which was kind of uh, shadowed and blocked, which I had to get in tune with. So last year was a whole rebirth year for me. Nice. And that's kind of how I became, you know, it was the rise of the Phoenix, the Phoenix rise of the Ray. love, within, the rise of the authentic self, the that's... true me. It's beautiful, man. I identify with that as well. As you know, like creatively, I just said, this, this is me. This is, this is that authentic artist I left behind and, and dove into so many other things thinking that's the way I had to make my way and, and left little John and all those passions and purposes in the rear. But I swooped back and much like you, man, set myself on fire and said, jump on these wings let's tear this mother trucker apart, man, in the most wonderful and, and rebirthing of ways, not destructive of ways. Um, but, but in a sense, you know, you, you, through destruction comes new growth as well. And I had to destroy some old habits and I had to um, some, leave some relationships behind and, and leave some just toxic, just ways and old programming behind. And so that that's, dude, that's why you and I met too, man. We were working on ourselves, man. We were trying to find a new way. We we're trying to reconnect with our, our childhood and innocent and healthy ways and, and honor um, the, you know, the, the core of our cores. And that's why the Bodhi bros, I know brothers for life came together, man. And, and, and now we're doing this thing and you're doing some really extraordinarily fun and, and positive and exciting things in your life with new relationships and just 
adventures and stuff and we're talking about things in the future that we want to do together and and you know me i have another podcast and shack seriously i love you man like it's <laughs> i i do i do i'm not I'm not hating i'm celebrating i just talk smack and we, whatever so shack if you're listening i know you're listening shack because you're following me um <laughs> yeah right um but seriously shack i love you um yeah all that stuff has come out because um the rebirth is upon us, folks. And this isn't a reading just for Ray and John. Oh no, you tuned in. You're part right. of the you're part of the Phoenix Club. Right. So spread your wings, man. This is the end of our uh, incoming energetic reading. So uh, which is beautiful because this is a new season, season four, episode one. Four. We're going into our second year, Ray. And although, like you said, we've done this format in a similar fashion, this is, this is definitely a little newer and we're going to stick with this, the promise, the commitment, and those commitment. links will be below. And yes. Yes. And patience. And the fruit is now upon us. Fruit Eat the fruit. Here. The fruit is here. I'm, you I never, you are, you. <laughs> say it, preach it, Ray. Cause I'm, I'm never going to say it again. I'm never going to say the fruit is hard to grow. That, that was a period that, that period's behind us. Right. The fruit is here. It's ready to be picked. It's ready to be bitten into. I could, uh, th that was a, that was kind of like a joke between us that could have gone on for the rest of our days, but you know what? We're open to learn. We're, we're open to new awareness. And my new awareness says that I don't necessarily know if it's that hard to grow. And if it is, I'm going to commit and focus on growing some fruit because I love fruit. <laughs> You're the fruit man. Literally and figuratively speaking. I'm the fruit man. You got you got me. I wish I had something to bite into right now. That would have been perfect. I'm 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 not that magical yet. So without any further ado, what's that? I said, all right, guys. Okay. This has been your reading for the week of six six. So it seems like all our readings kind of really all went together beautifully i mean there really wasn't anything that was like really contrasting at all even when i thought that miser one was going to be it could look like it was but yeah. it wasn't we, I, we we worked it into the tapestry of it all man right it was a necessary thread to pull it all together synergy oh no he didn't <laughs> <laughs> yes he did hey folks we love you shack we love you <laughs> um you don't love shack you're not a shack fan He's all right. He's, he's all right. It's Shaq, Shaq. I just, just, I know he's listening. So, because he's a big fan of the show. Um, so, uh, yeah. Next. Right. So, we're going to do it. We're going to do this roughly around the same time next week. We always try to do it like, yeah. To for, the next, for the following week. Right. So, folks, prepare yourselves for at least a while until you tell us not to i think we're going to commit right to this we're going to we're planting an orchard right here and we're because right. we did some research online we saw some other readers out there doing their thing we're not copying anyone we this show is not like any other card reading tarot offering oracle anything we're, we're we got our own style we've got we're building our own audience we're not grabbing from other people we're or get slowly organically naturally and but we need to do the same thing and i think I really feel through us talking and researching stuff that this is something that folks can comfortably and um, enthusiastically plug into and, and expect like, hey, unless something happens, like when I went through that horrible gout attack or Ray has to go take care of something on an emergency level, every week, once a week, there will be an incoming energetic reading. There you go. There you go. Bank on it. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next All time. Right. Namaste. I'm John with a J. Phoenix Ray. We out. We out.